Electric cars. We love them. We think everyone should drive them. But bloody hell, they're expensive. It's frustrating, isn't it? We know that there are so many people right now who are ready and willing to make the switch to electric, but simply are not able to due to the prohibitive cost. And the good news is, things are getting better. The gap in price between ICE cars and equivalent electric cars has massively shrunk in recent years. And better still, more and more car brands are actually committing to building small, simple, cheap electric cars instead of obsessing over giant electric SUVs made of touchscreens. That being said, at this moment in time, even the cheapest EVs on sale are still too expensive for a lot of people. And that is why today, we're going secondhand shopping. The deeper we enter into this electric era, the more the classified ads are filling up with lovely, lovely, lecky cars. Now, just to manage expectations, you're not gonna find any 500 pound electric beaters on this list. There is no electric equivalent to my lovely 1999 turquoise Ford Fiesta that I learned to drive in because they just don't exist yet. We're not at that point, alas. But there are some serious bargains to be had and for less than the price of the cheapest new electric car that you can buy right now. And in this video, I'm gonna take you through some of my personal faves. I'm Jack and this is The Fully Charged Show. Like The Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney, Australia on March the 11th and 12th. And the only place we could begin is with the car that started it all, the Nissan Leaf. Once, it was a groundbreaking piece of tech. One day, it'll be a museum piece, but now, it's just a bloody bargain. For as little as six and a half grand, all this could be yours. A practical, surprisingly fun to drive family car with a roomy interior, a useful boot, and some range. Range, of course, is an infamous weak point of these early Nissan Leaves, especially used ones, because these fairly primitive EVs didn't really have any kind of thermal battery management. Uh, they were much more susceptible to battery degradation than modern electric cars are. Now, to give you some idea what that actually looks like, early Nissan Leaf models came with a, a fairly modest 24 kilowatt hour battery pack, which was quoted for around 109 miles of range new. Based on Supreme Leader Llewellyn's experiences with his own beloved Nissan Leaf before swapping the battery, I think you probably shouldn't expect more than 50 to 55 miles of maximum range if you're buying a really high mileage early Leaf now. But look, don't discount the usefulness of a 50 mile electric car. If, for example, you're a two car household, the Leaf could easily serve as your day to day runabout. And remember, in the UK, the average journey is about eight and a half miles. You'd be astonished what percentage of your travel could be covered by a 50 mile EV. Alternatively, maybe one of your kids just learnt to drive and you don't want them driving off too far. Buy them a car that doesn't go very far. It is worth noting that charging can be a tad tricky for these leaves because the CHAdeMO cable on which they rely is slowly going extinct from the public charging network. And for that reason, I would probably only suggest looking at this car if you have the ability to charge at home. It's not gonna suit all use cases, but then again, it is quite literally the oldest and cheapest electric car that you can buy. And if you can make it work for you, you'll find that there is a surprising amount of charm hidden under that hideous exterior. Up next, we have the lovely Renault Zoe. This is a cracking little electric car which burst onto the scene in 2013 and is still going strong to this day. Go with this little French fancy and you'll be treated to a smooth, refined ride and simple, user-friendly cabin wrapped in a pleasingly compact package with styling that I personally think has aged extremely well. Rear seats are pretty cramped, but of course they are. It's a teeny weeny car. And a really handy thing about the Zoe is that Renault has made a real assortment of them over the past decade, uh, with different motor sizes, battery sizes, and levels of equipment, meaning that whatever your budget and requirements, chances are there's a Zoe for you. But for me, the standout pick of the Zoe range right now is the 40 kilowatt hour car that arrived in 2017. You can pick one of these up right now for around 13 and a half grand, which is by no means pennies, but for that, you get genuinely usable, go-anywhere range. Treat it carefully, and even one that's done a fair few miles should still be good for a maximum range of around 150 miles. This 40 kilowatt hour Zoe, for me, represents the cheapest way into an EV that could very easily serve as your one and only car. Couple of things to be wary of when Zoe shopping. Number one, charging speeds. Not all Zoes are born equal. 
in this regard. And curiously, it's actually the bigger battery versions that tend to have lower maximum charging speeds, unless they were specced with the optional rapid charging. It's, it's all a bit confusing. So just make absolutely sure that you know what speed the Zoe you're looking at charges before putting any money down. Next, and this is a big one, battery leasing. A unique quirk of the Zoe is that until quite recently, most models were sold without the battery included in the price. That was instead leased to the customer for a monthly rate. When buying a used Zoe now, that means that some models you look at will have the battery included and therefore typically have a slightly higher sticker price, whereas others will still be leasing their battery. And if you are buying a Zoe with a leased battery, you have two options. Option number one, buy the battery outright for a price determined by Renault based on the age and mileage of the battery. Option number two, just continue leasing it for that monthly fee. I do realize this is a bit of an off-putting faff, but I'd encourage you not to completely discount the Zoe on this basis. If you do some thorough research, there are some great deals to be had on these lovely little cars. Up next is a car that features on basically every list of good used EVs ever made, the BMW i3. I bloody love this car. Even almost a decade on from its creation, it still feels bold and fresh and innovative and significantly more interesting than just about any other small electric car that's come along since. It's also an absolute hoot to drive as BMWs tend to be. The styling is bonkers inside and out. The interior is incredibly spacious and furnished with interesting materials. The car itself is made from carbon flipping fiber for goodness sake. What on earth were they smoking at BMW? back in 2014. They must have lost so much money on every i3 that rolled off the production line. I have no idea how this car came to be, but I'm very glad that it did. Now, as with the Zoe and Leaf, early examples of the i3 came with a very small battery, 22.3 kilowatt hours. Those are good for around 80 miles of range, and you can pick one up today for about 14 and a half grand. This was then followed by rangier models with 33 and 42 kilowatt hour packs, the latter good for some 150 miles of range. And you can pick one of those up now for about 22,000 pounds. And again, I do appreciate we're not talking cheap, cheap here, but this is a nearly new car and it's still several thousand pounds cheaper than any of the cheapest new EVs that you can buy right now none of which are as interesting as the i3. Another great thing about the i3 is you don't need to be worried about battery degradation. BMW put some really clever battery thermal management systems into their car, meaning that any example you buy now is likely to have just as much range, give or take, as it did when it left the factory. Interesting, isn't it? We're now going through the chronology of early EVs and we're seeing them get a bit cleverer. Quick word of warning, some i3s were sold with range extenders, a little teeny petrol engine under the boot floor designed to fire up and top the battery up if it was running really low. Now, if you feel that this is the model for you, then go for it. It's a lot better than driving a pure petrol car. Just be advised that this doesn't benefit from the same tax breaks as EVs on the basis of not being a zero emission vehicle. What if you just want a small, simple, no frills EV with useful range? Well, the good news is a handful of car brands have promised the first wave of these around 2024, 2025. But the better news is that a handful of VW brands experimented with this concept a year or two ago with glorious results. I give you the VW E-Up, Skoda Citygo E, and Seat Mi Electric. I cannot say enough positive things about these cars. They are hands down some of my favorite electric cars ever made. They are of course derived from the petrol versions of VW Group's three dinkiest, smallest city cars, and they're even better as electric cars. The boxy exterior means they're much, much roomier inside than their tiny footprint would suggest, and they're just so incredibly straightforward. Conventional dials, conventional key, conventional handbrake, conventional gear selector, all that stuff remains from the petrol car. It's so familiar. Entry-level versions don't even come with an infotainment screen. It's just a phone holder mounted on the dash. I, I love that. And actually, one of the things that really stands out in my memory from my time with the Seat Mi Electric a couple of years ago is how comfortable it was. It's a lovely, squashy thing, an absolute joy to drive around town and surprisingly capable on the motorway, although the range does fall off a cliff when you start to hurry it along. Range, however, is pretty impressive on these cars. The Skoda and the Seat got the same 36.8 kilowatt hour battery pack, allowing for a real world range comfortably above 150 miles. 
provided your commute doesn't involve de-restricted autobahns. Curiously, the VW comes with a slightly smaller battery, 32 kilowatts, and there's even some very early versions knocking about with teeny 18 kilowatt hour packs. Ignoring those, you're looking at around 19 to 20,000 pounds for whichever of the three cars you go for, which does sting a little bit considering it's almost exactly what they cost when new, but that only speaks to how well these little cars hold their value which hopefully means if you buy one, when it comes to selling it down the line, you're not gonna lose a ton of money through depreciation. And again, 19, 20 grand still makes them much, much cheaper than any new EV that you can buy today. These are wonderfully simple little cars and absolute proof that less really can be more. Car brands, if you're watching, more of this, please. Speaking of electric cars that are oh so normal, it's time to discuss an unsung hero of early electric vehicles, the Hyundai Ioniq. Nope, not that one. No, not that one. Yeah, there it is. The Hyundai brand is flying right now, especially when it comes to electric vehicles. For me, it's a real pick em between Ionic 5 and Ionic 6 for the title of best electric car in the world right now. And part of the reason they're so good at EVs is because they started nice and early. The Ionic was first launched in 2016, and fun fact, it was the first car ever to be offered as a hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and full EV. It's a bland old thing, I won't lie to you. Looking at this car really does throw into sharp focus just how much more interesting Hyundai's have got in recent years. But what it lacks in style, it more than makes up for in kit. The Ionic Electric was only offered in premium and premium SE trims in the UK, meaning any car you buy now will come with a 10 inch touchscreen, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, heated seats, parking cameras, adaptive cruise control. But the real party trick of the Ionic is its efficiency. Because even by modern standards, this is a staggeringly efficient car. Thanks to slippery bodywork, a modest sized motor, and not being an SUV, this car is capable of four miles to the kilowatt hour easily. Potentially more than that if you drive it carefully. And that means that even early examples with their dinky 28 kilowatt hour pack are still entirely capable of 110 plus miles of real world range in any conditions. For context, the Kia Soul Electric, which is kind of the blobbier sister car to the Ionic, only got around 95 miles of range from the same size pack. That's efficiency, baby. Those 28 kilowatt hour cars can be had today for as little as 17,000 pounds. And that strikes me as a raging bargain. I love that this car was championing efficiency long before most car brands had even started thinking about it. Right, just a couple of cars remaining on my list of electric used car bargains. And we're jumping up a little bit in price for this last couple, but just hear me out because I think this next car might just be the most outrageous bargain of any used EV right now, and it's the Tesla Model S. Once upon a time, before the man in charge completely lost his marbles and dedicated himself to building Terminators and ruining Twitter, Tesla used to build cars. And it all started in 2012 with the seminal Model S. I think we can safely say that no car has moved electric vehicles along as significantly as the Model S did. It was the first truly desirable, luxurious, fast, rangy EV. It was the first electric car that you really wanted. And the great thing is, because of a stream of over-the-air updates, those early cars are really not so different from brand new Model S's, save for a few design differences. Now get this, a brand new Model S, that's £100,000 if you can get one, which you can't, by the way. A new Tesla Model 3, that's almost fifty grand before you've put any bits on it but you can pick up an early high mile Tesla Model S right now for as little as 30,000 pounds. And of course, in the ICE days, buying a high mileage example of a high-end luxury car was financial suicide, given the amount of different small mechanical components that were liable to explode the second you drove off the forecourt. But not so with EVs, especially Teslas. No engine means much, much less to go wrong, which means you can buy one of these higher mileage cars without the crippling fear that something very expensive is going to happen before you've even gotten home. As for battery deg, forget about it. Tesla are masters of battery longevity. Last year, friend of the channel Bjorn Nyland did some tests on a Tesla Model S battery, which had done 165,000 miles over seven years, and found it to still have 89% of its usable capacity. To put that another way, the maximum range of that particular Tesla had gone from 250 miles to 222 miles. Over 165,000 miles of driving 
Next time you hear someone say that electric car batteries only last a few years and then you have to buy a new one, this is what I want you to do. Punch them square in the nose. But here's the absolutely bonkers part. A lot of Tesla Model S's sold before 2017 came with a lifetime of free supercharging, which is transferable when you buy one used. This is just an unbelievable bargain. There is simply no cheaper way into a big, fast, luxurious, rangy electric vehicle. And if you just allow me to put my slightly wanky motoring journalist hat on for a second, you're not just buying a great car, you're buying a piece of history. Years from now, when everything is electric, the Model S will be looked back on as the car that kick-started it all, the first great electric car. And it will be kind of cool bragging rights to be able to say that you've owned one. And finally, to close things out, let's have a quick look at one more luxury electric car turned bargain. Now, the thing about high-end, luxury, posh-badged cars is that having the latest and greatest one is sort of half the point of having one at all so that you can passively assert your dominance over your friends at the golf club car park. As such, one of the first representatives of the now ridiculously oversaturated high-end fast electric SUV club is now a bit of a steal. I'm talking, of course, about the Jaguar I-Pace. Jaguar, the most confusing car brand in the entire world. Either their strategy for electrification is completely idiotic or it's so genius that my simpleton brain simply cannot understand its nuance. As far as I can tell, it goes something like this. Step one, launch a brilliant EV way before any of your rivals who you have long lagged behind, putting yourself in a great position heading into the electric future. Step two, do absolutely nothing while your rivals catch up. Step three, continue to do nothing while they pull out a healthy lead. Step four, liquidate? Look, I'm being facetious and I really hope that I'm wrong because I love Jaguar and I really like the only electric car that they've given us to date. Every I-Pace gets a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack, 250 miles of real world range, dual motors with 400 horsepower. This is a real powerhouse of an electric car. And while there have been many, many, many contenders since, for me, it's still the best handling and best to drive electric SUV. Although, of course, if you like driving, don't buy an SUV. The interior is beautiful and beautifully assembled. Everything you touch feels expensive and high quality, except for the infotainment system, which is total rubbish. So all very Jaguar inside. It really is an exquisite car. It feels premium and special and all those things that an expensive car should feel. New, it'll set you back 65 grand, but you can have an early eye pace now for as little as 38. And when I say new, we're only talking about a car that was launched in 2018, which means that every eye pace on the road is still covered by Jaguar's 100,000 mile, eight year battery warranty. So there we have it. That was a quick look at some excellent electric used cars that I think represent real bargains right now. Just a few speedy pieces of advice for anyone considering a used EV. Number one, charging cables. Make sure that the car comes with them. It'd be a real shame to get home, realize you don't have any cables and have to shell out a grand for one of those. Number two, be sure to buy from people who know electric cars. You don't want to find yourself buying a car only to learn that the chap who flogged it to you was totally wrong about the charging speeds, for example. Number three, don't listen to anything I say. I'm just a mere buffoon. Take this as a starting point. Do your own research, test drive some stuff, and form your own decisions based on that. And there we have it. Please make sure to like and subscribe. But if you have been, thank you for watching.